Well, hello everyone. So as you can tell on screen, the video is a lot shorter. And the reason being for that is that the rabbit hole building that I ended up using did a lot of the work for me, which, you know, at this point is kind of a nice little break on my end here. <laughs> but I did kind of overdo it in some uh, retrospects of the build. And I'll explain a little bit more on that a little later on. And I'm sure that you guys will clearly tell what I overdid it with. Now, for those of you just discovering my little corner of the internet, my name is Michael and I want to welcome you to Sovereign Gaming in Life Sims, the YouTube channel where I build worlds, lots, and share my thoughts on video games in the life simulation gaming space. So yes, we are continuing the build out of SimCity and we are doing the last lot build for my Midtown neighborhood, which is great because we have been working on Midtown for a little bit here. I started to kind of, you know, switch things up with my series by switching over to Blue Water Village to do some suburban built. And, you know, quite honestly, I'm going to continue to do that because I feel like it balances out the speed build series a lot better. And it also gives viewers um, more variety in terms of like what I build. Not everybody that enjoys my urban builds will enjoy my suburban builds, uh, suburban builds and vice versa, or perhaps you enjoy both of them. And if you don't enjoy either, then I don't know what you're doing here. <laughs> so yes, um, we are back in Midtown. We're doing the final lot build here. And I've always wanted to build the, um, I've always wanted to build this one out as the restaurant. Now in SimCity, we've got already a couple of restaurants. There are some that I used with the Bistro as usual uh, pack. Those were just kind of restaurants that I uh, just slotted in and created myself just at like different bars or different targeted locations and such and then of course there are like the rabbit hole restaurants as well namely we have friendly's diner which was a build that i did uh way back in old town actually that's the only rabbit hole restaurant that we have in sim city and so today we are actually going to be building out the higher end uh rabbit hole restaurant which i believe is actually called a bistro if i if my memory serves me correctly Anyways, the rabbit hole building that I decided to use was Bordell's Bistro. And that was a rabbit hole building that came with the Roaring Heights world. Now, for those of you that are dis uh, that do are downloading my world and all that, of course, the links are in the description box below if you are looking to download the lots and the worlds. Um, but the when it comes to downloading my world, you're really just not going to have a good time unless you also have the Roaring Heights um, world downloaded from the Sims 3 store. And I recommend the gold version so that you get the roller coaster and the other um, premium content items as well. And the reason being for that is really that I use just a shit ton of the Roaring Heights stuff. And <laughs> I use a lot of their objects, even the wallpaper that I use for the paneling. Uh, for panel walls, you know, in several of my builds come from Roaring Heights. So that is honestly the number one world that I would recommend you getting if you don't get any. Um, and, you know, just always do your research and make sure that you're getting it for the best deal. And yeah, so I'm using Bordell's Bistro and I'm actually calling this lot Bordell's Bistro as well because um, when it comes to naming community lots and then placing a rabbit hole building on top of it, when your Sims go to like become a partner to own the business, they're actually interacting with the object itself and it won't actually recognize the name of the lot. So unfortunately, the example that I can share here is with Friendly's Diner. See. I created the lot and I named it after WC Friendly, who was a saxophone player in Old Town back in the Sims 1 days. And when you interact with the actual um, diner rabbit hole object itself, it calls it like the Brunton's Boxcar Diner. And, you know, it just kind of sucks. And like you can't actually buy the WC Friendly like diner lot you actually are buying the rabbit hole and becoming a partner with all of that it's kind of hard to explain without like playing it right in front of you guys but i hope you are kind of getting the gist of what i am going for 
and why I have decided to name this one Bordell's Bistro because that is the name of the rabbit hole building itself. It just, it's just less cognitive dissonance for myself and I believe it would also be less cognitive dissonance for other players as well. Okay, let's talk about this monstrosity that is being built right before your very eyes. Okay, you guys, so I thought I was really doing something with this build. I was like, oh, we've got this beautiful glass um, pergola structure on the back of the building. I'm going to extend out the space and I'm going to make it extra fancy. And I'm going to give this uh, lot a complicated pergola with a huge fountain in the middle and all this and all that. I didn't have to go that hard on this. <laughs> I could have, you know, like this is totally me going to edit this. And the fact that the Midtown edit episode is right around the corner and that I go in the reverse order, this is literally going to be the first thing that I <laughs> edit. And it's going to be this complicated, overcomplicated pergola structure. I didn't end up liking it at all. And oh man, <laughs> I didn't. I thought I was really doing something when I was doing the build and like taking the screenshots and filming the episode, but watching this now, it's just like, I'm just cringing at like, what the hell was I really thinking here? This is stupid. And, uh, <laughs> and yeah, like I don't really care for this complicated pergola structure at all. I could have just really simplified it. In fact, that is going to be the edit that I make, uh, when I do the Midtown edit episode and thank God that is coming around the corner. Cause I can't believe that this is still in my game. But anyways, um, this pergola structure is coming down and I am burning it with fire if I can. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can spawn a meteor and see if that takes out half of it. Um, I actually don't have the skills to do that, so please don't look for that. But anyways, this pergola structure needs to absolutely rot in hell and it needs to go and it needs to leave my game. And the fact that it's still in my game and I have yet to film the Midtown edit episode is just, you know, it's making me really... <laughs> You know, it's making it easy for me to roast myself here, but what the hell was I thinking with this? Um, so yeah, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be removing that structure altogether. So if you're looking at it and if you're cringing like me, don't worry, it'll get removed. Um, but it won't be removed for this episode, so I guess we just gotta like... Man, we just really gotta like deal with it this episode. So yeah, this pergola structure is getting removed. My plan to edit this is I'm actually going to remove the pergola structure altogether. I'm going to keep the fountain. I'm going to see if I can get away with keeping the fountain because I do like the fountain where it is. And I think I just want to add in some extra vegetation in the corners there just to kind of um, just to kind of bring it all together and just to give it more of a tropical uh, feel to it. Something that like I really struggle with when building out these inner city neighborhoods is the use of green spaces. I've talked about this a little bit before, but um, specifically in like Midtown and even in the central business district, like the downtown core, um, there's a lot of concrete and a and I find it a little challenging to try and find some green space here and there. This lot was actually pretty good for green space. Like I was able to incorporate it a lot more and you'll see some palm trees uh, kind of pop up later on this episode and it feels a lot more lush because in my head, in this particular area of the map, this would be more of a tropical climate. It would have a hotter climate. And so, you know, in the inner city, it's kind of hard to depict that with, okay, I just haven't been able to find an opportunity to really depict that with the vegetation just because there's just been more of a need and a priority to uh, paint out the concrete and to give it an urban feel as opposed to a tropical feel. And I know that you can blend the two together and maybe that's something that I will try to do a little bit better when I go around to doing the Midtown edits. Um, but yeah, I really struggled with this one. and. Uh, I really struggle with this aspect of uh, of the lot building and even though I did try to like add in a little bit of greenscaping in front of some of the blocks I just found that the tropical trees were just too tall for example so I just used that pear tree that I've been using in front of a couple of lots um, on this particular street and yeah that is um, that's really the case with this one here is just that I added in some more tropical plants and I really feel like it helped to bring the um it really helped to remind myself mostly but also I think it'll help remind players as well that this is still a tropical climate despite it being in the middle of a city and even though I've been kind of 
not doing the whole tropical thing very well throughout all of the inner city neighborhoods, uh, neighborhood lot builds, like it's still the case here. I mean, Old Town, to be fair, like when I was doing all the Old Town episodes, like they have this really nice boulevard with some specific tropical trees, just uh, tropical palm trees just in the middle of it. So that kind of like saves my own ass. But, um, and you know, like to be fair as well, when I was designing this and create a world, and I was doing some of the boulevards, I was adding different palm trees elsewhere. So, you know, like I'm, maybe I'm just being a little too hard on myself, but I really wanted to bring more of that tropical vegetation back into the inner city, uh, you know, apart from all of those park builds that I did, uh, where, you know, I feel like I was pretty good at emulating that within those builds. But yeah. Um, the pergola structures coming down first thing in the midtown episode uh in the midtown edit episode and i'm going to be replacing it and trying to just like add in some more lush greenery areas and while also keeping the fountain one thing when it came to working with the fountains and with the geysers as well is that the i guess the geyser and the sprinkler objects are very like the like the large ones are super huge and I've been kind of wanting to place them in targeted areas, but I just never really found the opportunity to place them. So um, I was really happy to actually use the largest geyser possible here. And I was making it like spout through the middle and all that. And I really thought I was doing something with this. When in actuality, I just need to simplify it and just let the fountain do most of the work for me in terms of amazing uh, players and uh, creating a really dynamic, uh, a really dynamic i guess focal point within this part of the city one of the things that i've been trying to do this whole time is i've been trying to make the alleyways a lot more interesting than what they are normally <laughs> like normally in cities like an alleyway is just a place for you to like drive through pick up your garbage if you're yeah, if you work in garbage disposal and you know maybe park or something whereas i've been trying to like activate it here and there uh, for some of the lot builds as I have explained in previous episodes and such and so because this um, because the bistro rabbit hole allows sims to actually eat outside I really wanted to expand that space and you know just slightly activate the um, alleyway in a way that just kind of makes it seem a little more inviting like this isn't your shady alleyway that you're going to get mugged in this is the alleyway that's actually kind of cool to walk down and just discover new places and new things to do and all of that. So um, I think that by adding the greenery that I did for this particular lot really helps to create a more inviting space for it in a way that I haven't been able to do with the previous lot builds. So yeah, that was something that I wanted to do, wanted to achieve with this lot. And I feel like I'm fairly successful in achieving it. And with the outdoor eating space, I feel like that also uh, contributes a lot to how active this particular lot can be that goes above and beyond what the rabbit hole building really offers, in my opinion, at least. I do, however, stand by the outdoor eating space choices that I was making in terms of the design. I feel like the chairs and the tables just kind of worked perfectly the way that they were. I also finally found an opportunity to use the uh, hedge fences that I was trying to use in the family condo build but because i couldn't recolor them it just really wasn't going to work out for me then so i got my revenge and <laughs> i was able to use it uh, in this build i was able to make the colors work and whatnot so i'm very happy with that like they're beautiful hedges like why and why on god's green earth can we not recolor those whatever man um <laughs> I swear I'm just complaining this episode, you guys. <laughs> I am unhinged. But yeah, um, yeah, I, I got my revenge and was able to use the hedges in a way that I feel makes sense and it actually looks nice and I feel it just kind of contributes to that look and feel. Um, the bar that you will see me build actually gets removed. You see, I playtest all of the lots like I do a full sim day there and I get some sims to actually like order food and stuff and the bartender I guess never spawned 
maybe that works in other people's games and maybe I just didn't play test it long enough. So if you've ever placed a bar in your game on a community lot that's classified as visitors allowed and you drop in a uh, restaurant rabbit hole building on top of it and you can get a bartender to spawn, comment below. I would be very curious to see if that's even possible, but when I was doing the testing, it just wasn't actually spawning a bartender which is what I really wanted there but it doesn't happen so the bar gets removed I replaced it with fountains instead um, just like some of the late night fountains that are in the decorative objects thing that might be a corner that gets redone but I don't want to add in more seating because the seating is already kind of overkill anyways and I knew it was always going to be overkill just based on um, based on how many sims actually will visit restaurants and stuff but i wanted it to be somewhat realistic at the same time in terms of the scale so yeah that's um that's just a whole other thing there i decided to build up the space more than to not give me enough space uh speaking of the play testing your sims are able to eat outside at this lot and they do actually eat at these tables and all that depending on where they walk in or out of for that rabbit hole this rabbit hole has uh, back doors and front doors so sometimes your sims will enter the front doors and then exit out the back doors or sometimes they'll enter the front doors exit out the front doors and have to walk all the way around to eat their meals at a table it's kind of annoying just kind of how those logistics work out and i'm not too sure how they even work out but your sims can eat within the outdoor seating space that i have built for you guys so yeah it is absolutely possible the story behind this restaurant that I'm just kind of making up as I go along here is that it is a French restaurant that got money to expand and so they overdid it with the pergola structure. Now I'm going to have to change the description of it of course, but um, because I hate the pergola structure and I want that absolutely out of my game, um, but I am kind of leaning towards the idea of Bordel's the restaurant that got a lot of money to expand because they just became this hit restaurant and so they just kept building and building and building. So yeah, that's sort of the lore story I'm going with and if you have any suggestions on that, feel free to sound off in the comment section below. But yeah, uh, speaking of the rabbit hole uh, object itself, the rabbit hole and the foundation really don't mix well. In an ideal world, I'd be able to adjust the back doors so that they level off at the same level as the foundation that I built the outdoor seating areas on but because that just simply isn't possible and because it'll like mess up your game and well not mess up your game but because you're it'll like fracture the sims pathing patterns and all that I decided to separate it and I also wanted uh, the seating on a foundation because I wanted an additional level of separation from the alleyway because this is supposed to be you know quote unquote the fancy restaurant i don't want sims eating in an alleyway that has dump trucks like driving through it and all that i want at least there to be a level of separation from that so that it doesn't impact a sims eating experience so, so that was kind of the thought process that went behind that speaking of which there was a vote that i put on um, my channel regarding a name and so those results are going to be published um, just right in front of us right now I was asking for some names uh, I think I just called it a poll but I didn't even host a poll I just really like this particular name but there is a couple of names uh, that I was uh, asking for for street names and such and so I've got like a bunch of really great suggestions there Shane Sim Lo Wei was a really excellent suggestion and that's something I'm going to use in the future um, however the suggestion I'm going for for the midtown street that this uh, building actually sits on is going to be Crumple Bottom Avenue now I know what you're thinking I've overdone it with the Crumple Bottoms and yes I agree I agree I agree I have done a lot of lots and named them after the crumple bottoms it's the crumple bottom library the tea house and now there's crumple bottom avenue <laughs> so i am doing this one last thing here for the crumple bottom family who is honestly my favorite npc family ever because mrs crumple bottom is a real og and you know there's not enough dust in her purse to ever you know <laughs> to ever make me not bored of her and she was like a staple in the sims 2 so and in the sims 1 as well so yeah mrs crumplebottom is 
the best. And so I'm calling this Crumple Bottom Avenue, but I am totally saving Shane Simla Way um, for some addresses in the future, like when I get to the Far East neighborhood there, because that is actually going to be next on our list in terms of what we're building and all of that. And I'll explain that in just a minute here. But yeah, thank you to everybody who um, who had given a suggestion for different street names there. Obviously, like I'm going to be asking for more street names as we go along here, just because I am drawing a blank. And a big reason why I chose Crumple Bottom Avenue is because this street just north of this, I called Land Grab Boulevard. So I just kind of wanted to actually name it after some of the um the founding families i guess i'll have to like to be fair include the altos and the goths at one point but hey you know i'll cross that bridge when i get there and i bet you you know i'll probably just use those names throughout whenever i feel like it so yeah that's uh really great for all of those that suggested a name you guys are awesome i do appreciate it thank you so much but yeah, this uh, this restaurant here, Bordell's, sits on uh, Crumple Bottom Avenue. Oh, and by the way, I have decided to make avenue uh, like names that include avenue in them to be west to east facing streets, and then um, and then other roads that go north to south. I'll call like whatever street. So you know, we've got Land Grab. Oh, sorry, we've got Crumple Bottom Avenue here. I might call the street that's west to east south of this, like, I don't know, Goth Avenue. But for the street that's heading north to south, I'm going to call it something like Main Street. So yeah, streets are north to south, avenues are east to west. I think I overcomplicated my explanation there, so I do apologize. Like I mentioned before, this episode is really short and sweet, which is kind of a nice change of pace considering I've been giving you guys like our episodes back to back. And really I can just credit it to the Roaring Heights um, rabbit hole object just kind of doing most of the work for me. So, you know, this is a nice break for me as well, even though, you know, I overdid it on the damn pergola structure. Man, that is like number one on my list of like, to throw things into the fire so yeah um i'm done complaining about that <laughs> as we are getting to the end of the episode i will actually mention uh now that i'm here that we are gonna head back to the blue water village for next week's episode i want to build out a two-story single family home for you guys i think that that will um yeah, I think that you guys will really enjoy that. I know I'm going to really enjoy it because I'm going to go back to my comfort zone and do a neutral palette, which is what I love to do. And, you know, I prefer two stories uh, over bungalows because I just find that two stories are easier to build for me anyways. And I think that they just make they just look nicer to me. So I can't wait to actually do that with you guys. It'll show you guys that I got some sort of uh, house building skill here <laughs> because like even though like I have done some really great builds in the past like sometimes I just like to you know build something that people are expecting to look nice as something nice I hope that's making sense anyways next episode we are going back to Blue Water Village where I will try to live up to the words that I just tried to gas myself up with so yeah, a two-story uh, single-family home is totally on the agenda, and I am very excited for that. There's a neutral palette waiting for me, and I can't wait to actually start filming that, because at the time I'm doing this, I haven't filmed it yet. But yeah, that's going to about do it for today's episode. If the tours aren't already playing, then feel free to stick around for those. I've again tried to capture more of the inner city within the tours just to kind of give you guys like a better overview as to where we are with Midtown and where we could be going in the future. I'll tease more on that uh, at a later time though. But in the meantime, I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have yourself a wonderful day.